Now, if you've used Amplify and set up Amplify Auth in any way, you would know that when users sign up to your app, the user's data are not stored in your Amplify database. Instead, they are stored in a Cognito user pool because behind the scene, it's basically Cognito that handles Amplify's authentication. But what if you want those users to be stored in your database? Let's say you want to have a one-to-many relationship between the users and some other table you have in your database. Now, the goal of this video is to show you how to automatically add users to a user table you have in your database after they've signed up using Amplify Auth. My name is Christian Wamba, and I'm a developer advocate for AWS Amplify. Feel free to reach out to me in the comments regarding this video, and I'd be happy to help. That said, let's jump in and create an Amplify app. Now, head to the AWS console and search for AWS Amplify. Open it. Then click the new app drop down and select build an app. Give the app a name and click confirm deployment. This will take a minute to deploy, but once it's done, click the launch studio button to open Amplify Studio where you can set up and manage your data and users. Now that you have an Amplify app, we can set up auth for this app, which sets us up for creating user accounts. Click the authentication menu from the sidebar. Leave email as the login option. You can optionally make the password weak for testing, but don't forget to make it strong before moving to production. Click the deploy button, then confirm deployment to deploy the auth service. Give Amplify a few minutes to create and deploy an AWS Cognito service. Click done once the deployment finishes. Now, since the plan is to take the user that Cognito stores when the user creates an account and store that user in our database, we need to create a database for the users. Click data from the sidebar menu and then click the add model button to add a new table. We can name the table user, and to keep things simple, we can just store only the user's email. We should definitely make the email field required. Now click save and deploy to deploy and confirm deployment. Give Amplify a few minutes to set up a GraphQL API as well as a DynamoDB database. The next step is to connect our Amplify backend app with a frontend app. A simple way to do this is with a React app, so let's create one. Run npx create React app to create a React app. Now, before we start the app locally, we need to install some Amplify client libraries, which we can use to talk to our Amplify GraphQL API. CD into the app and run the npm install command for the dependencies. The first library is the API library, which is just like the fetch API and is responsible for talking to the GraphQL API. Then the second library is a UI library that makes it easy to avoid coding things like auth UI from scratch. Run npm start to start it locally. Great, now we have a React app with some Amplify dependencies, but we can't talk to our Amplify API yet until we configure it. And to configure it, we need to pull its credentials down to this project. Head back to the Amplify Studio and click the deployment successful link. Copy the pull command and run it at the root of your React project. Now to run this command, you will need to install Amplify CLI if you don't have it installed, I'll leave a link to a five minutes article on how to set up Amplify CLI. That said, after you run the command, the Amplify CLI will open the browser and ask you to authorize the CLI. Give it access and close the tab. Now choose all the default answers in the CLI to help Amplify understand your project setup. 
Once the pull command is done, open the project in the code editor. The CLI adds an amplify folder which contains your backend info and an AWS exports file to your project. For now, we are interested in the AWS export file, which is like a .env file that contains the credentials you can use to configure the Amplify client library and also access your Amplify GraphQL API. To configure the library, open the index.js file and import the Amplify library. You also need to import the credentials file and then call the configure function from the Amplify library to configure the library with the credentials. Now with all the configuration done, we should now be able to see or to use the Amplify library features to talk to our Amplify app. The only thing for now we want to do though is to test if we can actually sign up. Since we're using the Amplify UI library, we don't need to write all the auth UI code. To protect our app, what we need to do is import the UI library styles in our app.js file. Then we can import the with authenticator higher order component. This component does all the talking to the auth API for us and it can because it has access to our credentials. To use it, wrap the app component with it. Doing this with this allow users to see any component from the app down the components tree, unless of course they are signed in. If they are not signed in, they will see the auth UI instead. Now, if you jump back to the browser, you can see that we can't see the content of the app component anymore. And we get a form to sign in or create an account instead. Now, if the goal of this video was to add auth to our app, then I guess we are done. But at this point, if we sign up, we only get the user in an AWS Cognito user pool. We also want to store this user in our database. Cognito has a feature which allows you to create Lambda triggers that it can call when something like a new user sign up happens. We can update our auth or our auth setup in this case and ask Amplify to enable this feature. Run Amplify update auth to start a wizard for updating the auth feature. Choose walk through all the auth configuration. Select all the default options except OAuth, which should be turned off. Leave configure Lambda triggers for Cognito as yes. Choose pre-sign up as the trigger you want to enable and choose create your own module so you can write the handler function from scratch. Now, since we need to talk to our GraphQL API from the function, we are going to need to add GraphQL API credentials to the function's uh, environmental variables. Run amplify update function to update the new Cognito trigger function. Choose the function. Choose API as the category you want this function to have access to. Choose mutation as the operation you want to allow for this function. This will generate the environmental variables and print their names in the console. We're going to use these variables in a second. Now, before we finally start writing custom code for our trigger, we need to install node fetch, which we can use to talk to our GraphQL API. CD into the function's SRC folder and run npm install node fetch version 2 to install the fetch library. You can now open the custom.js file to start coding the custom trigger. Start with importing the node fetch library. Make sure there is nothing in the handler function, then bring in the environmental variables we need to access the API and store them in local variables. The same environmental variables that were printed in the console after we ran amplify update function. Create the GraphQL mutation to create a new user. The mutation takes a user input, which has an email field. Create a variable for this input and set email from the attributes that Cognito gives you when it calls this function. Set up the request options and most importantly, set the API key and the body. 
the body is an object containing both the mutation and the variables. Now create a response object to store the response. If there is no error after we attempt the fetch request, we update the response object with the data and the status code. If there is an error from the GraphQL API, we update the status code to 400. If we catch any other errors, we want to also set the status code to 400, but also update the payload to have the error message. Finally, we can then return the response object. Now, all of our changes so far are local. We need to push them back to AWS before we can start taking advantage of our new services. Run Amplify Push to push the changes to Amplify. Hit the Enter key to confirm. Once the deployment is done, head back to the app in the browser and try to create an account. There's no need to confirm the user email since the pre-signup trigger should have been called. To confirm that the flow was successful, head to the Amplify Studio and click Content from the menu on the sidebar. You should see that the new email is now in your user's table. Now that's exciting. All right, now before you go, I want to give you one more tip to help you debug your function in case anything goes wrong. And that tip is to review your logs while you are testing. This is handy when things don't work as you had expected and you want to check if there's an error in your console. Open the AWS console and search for Lambda. Search for the function we created. Select the function, click the monitor tab and click the view CloudWatch logs button. Select the most recent log stream and you can find all the logs that happened when the function ran. There you have it. We now have a table that tracks our users in our database and it's easy to do things like relationship between this table and other tables in our database. To avoid wasting resources, the one more thing we can do is run Amplify Delete in your terminal to clean up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.